Hey all, it's Lloyd here and today we're going to talk about a programming example in Java 8 and we are going to divvy up tasks on the available processors on our multi-core processor. So we're going to split four tasks on this processor which has four available cores and do all the work in parallel. Um, also others call it concurrent code so we will be splitting tasks up on processor cores rather than the slow way where you know we do tasks one at a time and if you're not programming like this today you definitely should be um, nearly all processor today have multiple cores and you should take advantage of that concurrency so two cores would be pretty rare but now we're looking at four eight and you know servers architectures with 32 so every time you're doing tasks now in uh, really any programming language you should think about splitting up those tasks on the available cores if possible. Uh, most of the common languages today, Java, Python, Erlang, and others, Scala, for example, are going to have uh, very easy ways to split up the tasks. So let's just dive right into it. So here I made a multi-core example, um, and we have our basic main method. I'm not going to uh, catch any catch any exceptions here. So the first thing is getting the number of available processors. And you can see I just ran this, um, this code. So the number of available processors on this is four. Um, I can see that on my Mac by um, system about this Mac. And then I can see I have a 2.6 gigahertz Intel Core i5 um, with eight gigabytes of RAM, 1600 megahertz of DDR3. So those four cores, our printout number of available cores is four. Um, I have this override just in case, you know, if I want to run the code um, as a single thread application, um, I can do so. So let's just get that out of there for now. So instant now, um, we're just going to start the clock so we can look at the time that it takes. You can see this took about 12 seconds. Um, this is Java 8, the instance they revised the, the time class. So this is the, one of the new methods in Java 8. You need an executor, and executors are going to allow you to execute tasks on your processor in different ways. There's a number of different methods. Here we have a new work stealing um, pool, and the work stealing pool, you can read about it. It's new in Java 8, and it allows you to divvy up on available processors. Um, so it will do at most um, tasks for the number of available processors. And how it splits up the tasks is the unique algorithm and it, it maximizes scheduling. We won't get into that, but all you need to know is you can use these executors and you can read about them. So if I do executors dot um, new, I can see all these different types, cache thread pools, fixed thread pools, uh, single thread executor. And you can see I have up here comparing um, a single thread executor. What you need to know about these when you um, you know, when you're doing performing uh, tasks that require heavy performance, you want to think about how long it takes to set up and, and tear down threads, which it can be significant if your tasks are fast. Um, so a lot of tweaking here is involved, actually, um, depending on what your task is. And you can play around with it pretty quick by, um, you know, calling these different classes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a list of futures. And futures in um, Java... They're very similar to threads, except for futures can return something. Threads are, are more do some work and then die. Um, these are much easier to you know, return a double here for this, for this example. We're going to average a list of uh, random doubles. So we're going to make a, a list of these futures. For this case, we're going to have um, the, the list size as, um, as four for the number of available processors. So we're going to do a loop for every core and we're going to add into this list um, a new thread pool. Um, so the index will be i and the thread pool is our executive pool and we will submit a new worker. I'll show you what that worker is in, in a second. So from there, um, this starts all the threads. They, they start running after this call this call right here is a non-blocking call. So this is non-blocking. What I mean by that is it won't wait until the task is done. It's going to submit the task and it can, it can go on and start. 
um, at a later time. So these will be very quick to execute. Now that's different. This is a blocking call. So the difference here is now I'm going to go back through my list after I've submitted them and I'm going to get the value. So this is a blocking call and that's going to wait until um, these tasks are done. So this blocking call um, while it's waiting, let's say zero is the slow one. Um, and you have one, two, three, four. While it's waiting for zero, those other tasks can be doing their, their work. So here you can see, you know, typically the order of execution is um, not guaranteed. So we have four different uh, tasks running. You'll see different things. But here, since we're going to sum the same list size, they're going to they're gonna return in that order, zero, one, two, three. Um, different tasks of different sizes, they can come back. But the point here is when you get from the future its return value, which is a double here, the point is while it's getting, the other tasks can be working. So you're not slowing anything down. You're just waiting to finally uh, get. Now, this isn't probably the best example of how to use um, futures in this way. Typically, you can use the executor and you know wait for them all at once but here gives you a good a workable example that you, know, you can you can pull each um, future itself one by one rather than wait on a whole executor and then this will print out the average and the duration I get at the end and it shows how long it took which is 13 seconds here um, okay so let's go into what the the futures are so the futures are um, a worker and I call it a worker and it implements a callable so this is a little bit different than a normal Java thread, which would be a runnable. Um, this is a callable, and the callable has, you know, we have the basic uh, properties and constructor in this worker, but we have a method called call. And call is the one that does all the work in the callable. So it's just going to be like um, your run method in a thread, but we have call here. Call is different because it's parameterized with a double. So because we're a callable of double, that means that this whole thread is going to return a double. Now, if you're using threads, it gets a little cumbersome to return values because the run method in a thread is going to be void. So we're not going to be able to get a value as easily. We have to do different callback me mechanisms there. So here we're going to call um, and we're going to return something. So when you're writing futures in Java, it's easy to return a class or anything that you're doing, but you typically want to do work and then have that work returned to you um, in the form of some object, which is what we have here. So we're going to go through this um, a list, and we have a work list of double here in our callable method. So the work list um, we're going to go through, and I'm using Java 8 streams here. So we're going to go to a stream and we're going to collect these. Um, now, this is also using Java 8, and we're going to do a worker task. So this task is to um, total all the lists, all the elements in the list, and then we're going to um, get the average. So you can see in my constructor, when I construct this, I um, populate the list with random numbers. And my list is 2 up to the 22nd. So if I do... Uh, to up 22, it's about uh, 4 million elements in there. So each one's going to sum 4 million um, items. All right, and then at the end, we're going to average with our collector. And this collector uses mutable reduction. And you can read about this more. It's, it's pretty involved. But this collector um, uses these functional methods, which um, are really cool in Java 8. And let me just show you what this worker task is. So the worker task will average the numbers, and it has um, a double for the total and the count. So obviously the average is the total number um, over the count. So average will, if the count zero, will return zero. If it's not, we're going to return total divided by count. So that's going to be your typical average. So except we're going to um, just add one, add the number to the total, and then we're going to add one to the count. And then combine is a is a bit of a strange example. But for the mutable reduction, we can have a worker task where the worker task um, can be combined with each other. So you can see we can combine a worker task with a worker task. 
and this won't get called actually um, because we're going to go through the numbers with string. You could use parallel string like this, which will divvy this stream up in more parallelism than this example. Um, I haven't noticed this will add any performance though, just to the work that we're doing and the size of the memory that it's working on. And then it's going to print out that the worker's done and return an average. So let's just go over this one more time. We're going to get the number of processor cores, and for this example, it's going to be four, and we're going to add them into futures. So we're going to use our executor service to add them into um, workers, and the, this is going to submit the workers. Submit is going to call um, the call function on the uh, futures. So it's going to start them working, and then we're going to get the value from the futures later after they've all been submitted and are working. So the workers are going to have a big list of size 2 up to the 22nd and of random numbers, and we're going to go through and we're going to collect them, and we're going to average them with this Java functional method and using the streams class that's new in Java 8. And, um, this method will be called to uh, sum, or this class will be called as a task to sum all the random variables. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and start the um, start this, and I'm going to show you here on my activity monitor the percentage of the CPU. So the percentage of the CPU, if you have four cores, can go up to 400%. Um, so you can see all these tasks are only on one CPU. I've run this a number of times. If we get lucky, we'll see it at 300%. Um, and that way you can know, you know that your tasks are working. So if, if you're running um, code on a good performing system, you're going to see this up above percentage. Now, this may, you know, it depends what your tasks are. Sometimes they're just waiting um, on network resources or disk resources or something. This is more of a CPU intensive task being that we're summing doubles. But let's go ahead and run this. So it says processor cores, and it's starting to set up the different um, futures. So this one finished, and you can see that my Java um, CPU is going up. You know, I may not get lucky here, and it goes above 300%. It's done now. Um, it's going to depend on the average. Also, this um, movie recording that I have has taken quite a bit of CPU. So it only scheduled them on two cores, which we saw... Um, or maybe three cores because we saw it above 200%. So it took 16 seconds. It's going to take a um, varying amount of time uh, depending on the memory size that we have and the work that we have to, to have to do, as well as on the executor class, how long it takes to set up and tear down the threads, which can be a significant time. Because you can see um, these, these ones were executed fairly quick and... Um, on the same amount of memory. So that does it for this example. I have the code checked into GitHub and you can go ahead and take a look there and the link will be paste will be pasted below. Thanks for watching.